Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. I have only, I've literally just got here. I've just set my two rods up. Anybody who watches my videos knows that I like to try and get a line in the water before I do anything else. I've got two rods out now and I'm going to sort myself out. The plan is today that I'm going to be fishing a rock mark and see what type of shoreline it is. I'm fishing a rock mark, ideally, hopefully, for smooth hounds and bass. At the moment, we've got three hours of the ebb, so the tide is halfway down. I'm hoping to fish three hours down and maybe one hour up. So I'm following the tide down along these rocks. I'm gonna, I might get like another 80, 60, 80 yards further down, but I'm gonna follow out and then follow it back in. I'll show you the rigs as I start setting them up. I just wanted to say hello to you because the sun's come out. I am expecting a little bit of rain. I don't know if you can see, there are some quite sinister looking clouds over on the way there. <laughs> it was glorious all the way here. And as soon as I pulled into the car park, it absolutely poured it down, I thought. Well, if I catch a fish, it'll be worth it. The two rods that I've got at the moment, I, I always like to try and get a line in the water before I do anything else, before I set anything else up. So I've got two rods out now. I've got a two hook scratching rig on one side, which is going to be catching anything. That's got ragworm on small hooks. And on the other rod, I've got a peeler crab bait out at distance. I'm going to be fishing a couple of three different rigs and either ragworm, peeler crab, squid, or a mixture of all three. I will show you the baiting up and the rigs as I get to it. Oh, oh that was a bite. See it on the left hand rod? Yeah, I'm gonna have to deal with that. Two minutes. That shows you how quick that bite came on there. I didn't even have a chance to set a tripod up or anything. But, first fish is... A lovely little spotty dogfish. As far as dogfish go, that's quite a nice looking one. And the rig that I caught that on was just a two hook flapper rig. As in, it's got one hook and two hook that flap around with just small hooks. These are size two hooks. And I just baited those with ragworm. So anyway, now that I've got the blank out of the way, <laughs> let's get a couple more baits out. Right, I've kind of got myself organised now, a little bit more. Yeah, I just managed to get two rods in the water, so the baits had been in a minute, max. Just saying hello, and one of the rods started going. I hadn't even had a chance to put the tripod up. So yeah, I've got myself off the blank with a little dogfish. The uh, the rigs and the baits and that fell too. Sorry, I'm just reason you've got to keep an eye on this is because smooth hounds, when they pick up a bite, when they pick up a bait, they run. So yeah, you've got to you've got to keep an eye on them. I've seen it before when we're fishing on a beach and someone's walked away for the rods for a second and I've had a bite and the next thing we know the rod's just skimming down the sand. Yeah, the, the rig that I caught that on was a two hook flapper rig, just a very simple two hook rig. Like size two hooks on and ragworm. Now the other, the other rigs that I'm fishing is going to be pulley droppers at the minute. I'm just rigging another one up. What I like to do is I like to pre-bait a couple of hook lengths just so that if the fish all come in on a group all I need to do is just take one hook length off put another one on and I can cast it straight back out. Plus, peeler crab baits do take a little bit of prepping and they take a little bit of work. It's not like threading a couple of worms on. I'm going to give you a demonstration of that in a second but what I usually do is I have, I have a packet with some, some pre-made rigs in it just in case I lose a few, so I can just grab one straight out of the packet. And I have some pre-tied hook lengths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up an entire rig. A rig with a hook length and a lead. I'm going to hang it from my tripod, so in case I snap off, or if I, or if I lose one, I can just clip a whole rig on straight away. And I'm going to pre-bait some hook lengths, so if it's just the hook length I need, I'll just do that. But it saves you loads of time. And it's fishing time as well. Because if you've not got a bait in the water, you're not going to catch a fish. Get this rig knocked up. And I'll show you the baiting up. Got one. That. 
Oh, that is what I'm here for. Straight away, <laughs> fantastic. I don't know if I managed to show you the bike properly. But that's your smooth down. That's what I'm here for. That there is, that's an average stamp. That'll be four or five pound. But <clears throat> I had to fish it. I'll show you how I fish the rod. Just because like I was saying, when they pick up and they run, I mean, you can see how much bite you've still got in him now. They really do run. Now I've had them here in this, in this area of the coast, up to being well into double figures. So this is a great start. You can see there, the rig that he's, he's taken, it was a pulley dropper rig, and he's actually taken the circle hook. So, there's the circle hook, look, just in, right, oh, perfect, I couldn't have planned that any better. I was just about to give you a demonstration on the hooks, the rigs and the baiting up. Well, this shows you that they work. I'm now gonna show you how to make them and bait them. But yeah, that's fantastic. That is a great start. Get me tweezers out and on again. Now, smooth hounds, although they are a member of the shark family, they haven't got any teeth. They've just got little crushing pads. You couldn't do this with a top. <laughs> but yeah, that is amazing. That is a starry smooth hound. I'm just going to drop him in a rock pool here and I'll get the rig sorted out. First thing I'll talk about is my bait. I've got a little bit of ragworm. I've got half a pack of old squid. And in the bottom of here, I have some gold dust, which is peeler crabs. Right now, peeler crabs, all crustaceans, doesn't matter if it's shrimps, lobsters, crabs, scorpions, any of the like, anything with a hard exoskeleton. Oh. I am gonna be able to turn my back on these rods for a second. There's another smooth down. This time on the scratching rig. There's another starry smooth down. This time, quite a bit smaller, but with equally as much fight in it. Yeah, I can't turn my back on these rods for a second. <laughs> I'm gonna have to show you the baiting up, then set the cameras up and only watch the rods, because I nearly lost that one there. This is my pre-baited rig. This is the one that I keep ready just to cast straight out. Peel a crab bait, clip down on a pulley dropper rig. I have a video on the Fish Locker Workshop channel showing you how to make these. But basically what it does is it clips your bait down so you can cast it out. As soon as it hits the bottom, it as soon as it hits the seabed, or even sometimes in the water, it releases your clip off there. So you end up with a hook length that sits on the seabed below the lead. So you clip up via a pulley bead on the top and your bait clips down to your lead for casting. So there, just like that. And I fish a 3 0 specimen extra and the panel hook is a circle hook. I think it's a 4 0 Mutsu circle. I'll show you more I'll, I'll, I'll show you more detail as I'm baiting up. I need to get a bait right up there because them fish are on it. Now this rod with a pulley dropper, because these smooth hounds bite so hard, I mean I don't know if you saw that rod tip there, that rod nearly left the, the rod rest. I back the drag right off. So if I pick one up, if there's a bite, it'll just go. That's all no. Right, we'll try that again. All crustaceans, that's being crabs, shrimps, lobsters, anything with like a hard exoskeleton. In order for them to grow, in order for them to get larger, they need to shed off their old shell and grow a new one. Now at that moment in time when they're shedding their shells, we call them peelers. And these crabs are all in a stage of peeling. This one here has just popped. That's what you call it when his shell is literally 
popping off its back. This is its old hard shell and the soft one underneath. It's a peeler. Now peeler crabs, there isn't anything, <laughs> there isn't anything really in the UK that lives in the sea that won't eat a peeler crab. And <clears throat> when the fish are on the feed, like these smooth downs, for crab, it's it's thick and fast, like you've just seen there. I've just, I've just had two in two casts in a space of minutes. These are pack fish as well, so these hang around in groups. So yeah, this is why I'm gonna I'm gonna try and pre-bait like four or five hook lengths now. Just so that when they start running through, all I have to do is change a hook length. I don't have to keep pre-baiting. Because that might be the difference of two or three fish at the end of the session. If it takes you four or five minutes to make each bait and your rod's not in the water for that period of time and you rebait ten times in a session that's potentially 45 minutes of fishing time you've lost per rod so all I'll do is peel some of the shell off when it pops dispatch the crab then our fish this is 40 pound fluoro what's that two foot two and a half foot the hook lengths depend on the size of the pulley the size of the pulley dropper rig that I've got I've got a 3 oar specimen extra and as a panel hook I've got a circle hook. Quite often you will find when they pick it up and they run with it they will hook up in the corner of the mouth with the circle. Now all I'll do is I'll... This was quite a big crab this. If you've got a smaller crab you can use one crab per bait. Also it depends how many you've got. They've been really hard to, been really hard to come by this year down in Cornwall. So yeah, people are buying them for £1.50, I've even seen them up to £2 per crab. If you can collect your own, that's great. Lash the bait through, so both hooks are into the bait. And then all I'll do is I'll just use a little bit of bait elastic to whip the legs on. Just so that I've got a nice streamlined bait for casting. The fundamental of this bait is being that it's held to the hook, so it won't fly off when you're casting. The hook points are proud, so that you can hook the fish. That's it. So you've got a nice, smelly bait that the fish are going to be able to, the water clarity here isn't great you're not looking at more than a couple of feet of visibility so these aren't going to find your bait by sight they're going to find your bait by smell peeler crab baits are great for that nice and stinky there's one hook proud there's the other hook proud that's it that is a peeler crab bait what could resist that I've got them fish down in a rock pole down there what I'm going to do I'm going to quickly knock up three or four more baits so I've got them ready then I'll release those fish and we'll move down the rocks to the next platform because the tide's gone out a little bit. This really is just non-stop. I was just in the process of moving the rods further down. Rod in my hand as I was doing it. It's gone off again. This time. This time with an even better one. So that's three fish in three casts. <laughs> this one really did fight well. Get all them baits knocked out. I'm gonna to have to I'm gonna to have to kind of sit just two minutes now, knock all the baits out, get all the baits ready and then fish. Because I can't do both. But again all that was was it was a um the pulley dropper rig and there's the peeler crab bit. So the peeler crab is absolutely smashing it. I don't even think I'm gonna bother putting the squid out unless I run out of peeler crab really early on. I'm just going to keep going, you keep using peeler crab. But yeah, the two fish that have come on the polydropper rig so far have fallen to the circle hook on the panel. This is why I've gone for 40 pound fluoro because the area that I'm fishing out of, or the area that I'm standing on, if you want to know what it's going to be like out there, have a look around here. There are going to be rocks, there are going to be little pinnacles. This one here, as I was bringing it in, rubbed up against a rock. So yeah, I landed the fish. If that had been 20 pound fluoro, that would have probably snapped. But yeah, I've got the fish back. That's the main thing. Yep. 
and here she comes. That is a nice fish. Right. This is another really good fish. Again, circle hook. Circle hook in the corner of the mouth. There you go. All of them have been really starry, haven't they? And that eyeball there is just incredible. Amazing. Thick and fast. <laughs> so I've dispatched the crab. I'm now taking as much of the top shell off as I can. I leave all the legs on. Just take off the top shell, the vent shell, and break these up. Then for a crab this size, all I'll do is I will cut it in half but only partially like that so it's not gone all the way through the reason being is so that you can make it one long bait like a long thinner bait rather than a round fat one there look. see how that crab's now stretched out Now I'll take my whipping elastic. Some people take the legs off. I don't bother taking them off when I'm when I'm fishing for smooth downs. I'm not casting massive distances. I'm casting maybe 100, 120 yards. A little bit of a whipping round that hook. There we go. Then I'll take my circle. Take your panel hook. Bring it down. Give it one. Two, three, and then through. Tighten it up, and there's your bait. That hook's proud, that hook's proud. The bait's lashed down, lots of scent coming out of it. What wouldn't want to eat that? This little one did all of its fighting when I got it ashore. If you notice, this one's hardly got any spots. And the other ones have been really vivid. Yeah, <laughs> loads of fighting, this little guy. This is why I do it like this. This is the one that I have just unhooked from that smooth hound. So all I do there, unclip it off my trace, put it down in the bait box. One of my pre-baited ones, that I have suspended from a tripod. Take it off. Clip it onto the trace. And there. You're ready to cast out. That was seconds.
that one that one was another one that put up a cracking fight and this one has absolutely no spots so the other ones have been full starry smooth hands this one here actually now that mark there is where my hook's been this one has been hooked and released before but I'll just show you the comparison between the other one that I've got in the pool there here look this one here <laughs> bit off more than I can chew now. This one is a starry smooth hound, you can see the spots. This one is a common smooth hound, no spots. Like I say, this is the first time I feel like I'm I'm kind of ahead of the game, I know what I'm doing, I'm on it. Because I've got three baits ready to go, just clipped up on my tripod, and I'm fishing one rod out and one rod in. So I've constantly got baits ready. And if I cast one out and it have a fish on and I cast another one out and got a fish on, I've got spare baits for three of those and in that time I should have been able to make another one. Now I have five more peeler crabs left. So three baits, one out, so four. So if I catch nine more fish, I think that's going to have been an amazing session. We've already had, I think we've already had eight. So yeah, that one actually, that last one, that one that we're common smooth down, was on a ragworm bait. I just head hooked like eight or nine ragworm because they're only small and lashed them all up so I made like a ragworm sausage just to, just to see, just because I thought yeah they're catching on peeler crab, I'll see what else I can catch on the smaller fish, I just let them go one at a time the bigger ones, I've been keeping in a pool here, look they're perfectly fine in this pool, well that shows you that'll show you the difference, there See the spots on this one? And this one has no spots. Both still smooth hounds. Something about their eye is just amazing. The only reason why I've kept them in a the pool is because I want to keep the biggest one to weigh it. I don't have to keep weighing them and weighing them and weighing them. All I'll do is I'll just keep them in a pool until the end of the session and the biggest one I'll weigh it then. But I think those are about eight pound. If I, get, if I get a double figure one today, I will be over the moon. <sighs> Fantastic, it really is non-stop action with these fish, because they do. Ah, oh, there's a big seal rocked up down there. I hope he's not going to cause me any dramas. These, um, they're called gummy sharks. In Australia, they call them gummies. You catch these all over the world. And you can catch them in the Canaries up to being like 40 pound. In the UK, a 20 pound fish is an absolute monster. But yeah, they call them gummy sharks just because they haven't got any teeth. They've got, just got gums, so they say. I'll show you one. Oh, maybe I won't show you with that one then. You see there, look. They just have no teeth at all. I'll let them two go now. In fact, you just come with me. Oh, we've got another fish. There it is. Tell you what, he put up a really good account of himself. That peeler crab is absolutely nailing it. That's a nice fish that, that is a lovely fish that. Circle hook again, yeah, so far I'm pretty sure they've all been females, we haven't had any males. That circle hook is just nailing them every time. Where have I put my leatherman? Left it over there. You just need to be careful when you're using two hooks and you're unhooking like this. Because they could do, do one thrash and next thing you know, you've got the other hook stuck in your hand. There you go. Go and drop it back.
I followed the tide right down because we're, we're bang on low water now. I'm going to fish it here for maybe half an hour until I get pushed back off. And then, <laughs> this is kind of it. I don't need to keep fishing, I've already had an amazing session. If the fish stay on the feed as the tide turns, because they've been feeding on the ebb, they've been feeding on the tide going out. If they stay on the feed, I will use up all my paler crabs. What might happen is the fish will turn off the feed as soon as the tide turns. If that happens, <laughs> I'm happy to call it because it's been amazing. But yeah, let's just hope we can winkle out a couple more fish. This is, this is the perfect time, I love it like this. First light or last light. It makes me laugh a little bit. <laughs> You've seen these fish. I mean, although they do fight a little bit, I think we have got a bite starting on the right hand rod. Although they do fight really well. You've seen their teeth. Like they have none. You put your fingers in there, hold on to them, you bite down on your fingers. But yeah, if you're a shrimp or a crab or a worm, these things would look like the devil. But they have absolutely no teeth. And yet the, the last recorded unprovoked shark attack in the UK was a surfer that complained that one of these had bit him on the thumb and left a bruise. If by any chance there's anybody watching this who knows that surfer, do us a favour and just give him a dig for me and just say, I wait me, <laughs> come on. <laughs> You're trying to tell me that one of these in an unprovoked attack while you were surfing bit hold of your thumb and left a bruise <laughs> and it was enough for you to complain to the authorities about shark attack mania eh they are, they are good eating I've had them before there's sometimes there's quite a few fish that are sold under the under the name of like rock salmon or flake but yeah bullhuss spur dog smooth hound they're all of kind of the same family and they all when prepared properly, they all taste really nice. I'm just, I'm just fishing for fun today. If I'd have caught a nice bass, if I'd have caught four or five pound bass, I would have kept that for the table. Uh, smooth downs, smooth downs are just good fun. There is actually, <laughs> now that I'm talking about it, I've identified today the two different types that you get. The common smooth hound, which is the one without the spots, and the starry smooth hound, the one with the spots. It's actually been scientifically proven that they are exactly the same. They're the same fish. There's just some have spots and some don't. We always kind of thought there was two commons and starries, which is why there's two different records. But our scientists have checked the DNA and they're both exactly the same. But you can see now why I have to fish these. If I was going to sit with my hands on my rods and I was going to watch for the bite, I could just I could fish without the rod on the ratchet. But because because I'm fishing tow rods and because I'm doing other things, I've backed the drag right off, so there's no drag on at all, so it just runs off. And you've seen how these pick up the drag. They do run well. Again, circle hook, right in the corner of the mouth. This is another one without any spots. Peeler crab bait. Yeah, it, it, you can't fall off a peeler crab. There's not much that doesn't like peeler crabs. This, you can see how much, another female as well. You can see how much fight they've got in them. As in it's scrapped all the way in and it's still scrapping now. We've done well, it's just starting to rain. There you go. Just couldn't turn it. Calm down. You just uh, oh.
There you go. Two and two. Just like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to leave these two in these two poles to calm down a little bit. I'll take the hooks. Take the hook out with that one. Uh, let's have a look. Okay. This is another reason why those detachable hook lengths are such a good idea. Because look, you just detach the hook length and you deal with the fish. Again, circle hook right in the corner of the mouth. You let the fish run, then tighten up the drag and lift into it and that circle hook just nails them right in the corner of the mouth. This one is a lovely starry. God, they are a handful. I don't know if you can see them blood vessels shining through there. But yeah, this one's a little starry. It's good. Let's get two of them pre-baited hook lengths cast out. This is what I mean about why you've got to be prepared, because it is all go. These hook lengths, these hook lengths that I've made up out of 40 pound fluoro, usually in a session like this, fishing on the rocks, I will have to change out four or five. I'll have to either cut them down or change them out. I'll just scrap them completely and just take the swivel and the hooks off three times. I've been using 20, this is 40 now, and all of them have lasted. I mean, yeah, they're not going to last. They're not going to make it to another session, but they've all lasted on this session. Now the rig body, I've made that. I think it's out of 60 pound mono, and the hook lengths are 40 pound fluoro. You can use mono as well, but <laughs> yeah, I like fluoro. I like fluoro from hook lengths. They're starting to get a little bit chaffed up, but smooth on skin will chaff it up eventually. And all I'm doing was a little bit of free time that I've got now, while I'm waiting for a bite. As I'm making up more crab bits. Smooth downs, they will take other baits. I mean, in areas like the Solent, I've done really well on ragworm and squid. From the boat, caught loads of them on squid. But from the boat, I've caught them on fish baits, I've caught them on pilchards. I've caught them on pilchards and mackerel before. But from the shore, without, without a doubt, hands down, the best bait I would recommend would be painted crab. Well, you've seen how tonight's gone. Well, today, this evening, this afternoon. I will mention this real quick. Couldn't find my fishing scissors on the way out of the house, so I've chucked Mrs. Fishlocker's kitchen scissors. Thank you, Mrs. Fishlocker. <laughs> I don't think you're going to want them back after you've seen what I've been using them for. I think that must just be a tiny one, but... Yeah, the bites have dropped right off now. This is the longest period of time I've been without a bite. Oh, it's still there. Whatever it is, it's still there. Well, it's another species to add to the telly. A little tiny strap conger eel. I'm glad that these guys have only just turned up because they are a nuisance. There you go. All ready to go. I'm not putting in mega, mega casts here. You don't need to. 100 yard lobs of doing it perfect. That, that little eel there, that that actually makes sense as to that missed bite that I've just had on the rod. I had a missed, I had like a good couple of knocks, a little bit of drag runoff, and then when I brought it in, it was everything twisted up. That makes sense. There's a bunch of little eels out there now. Yeah, that makes sense. This little lady ran me on a merry dance. Yeah, this one scrapped really hard. <laughs> yeah, and guess which hook took it? Pen look again. Circle look on the panel. Tell it's getting dark, it's got wide eyes on it. Sun's just setting now. 
But my last baits to use, this has been absolutely amazing. God, I tell you what, dude. There's some strength in them. Tell you what, it's a good job they haven't got sharp teeth. Because they'd have had my hands off today. <laughs> They've just got massive fins, haven't they? I mean, just look at the size of those pectorals. And they're just built for speed. They are a stunning fish. Proper little, <laughs> proper little apex crab predator. They are stunning. Just as I was putting one rod down, the other rod went. You can see with this fish, you can see by the shape of them how they feed. They're absolutely flat on the bottom. They're just flat, aren't they? Their noses, their mouths, everything, they are just flat. Just designed to be flat on the bottom. These aren't free swimming fish. These are ones that are hunting around, rooting about on the bottom for crabs and shrimps and prawns and worms and anything else they can get hold of. You can tell by their shape. So when you're presenting a bait for them, the bait needs to be tight on the bottom. Which is why these pulley droppers, I think they're perfect. Because your bait, once it, once it hits the water, unclips, slides right down to the lead and is presented below the lead. Sometimes I've found that if you're fishing a pulley rig, if you're fishing from elevation, if there's a bit of tide, your bait can be up off the bottom. Not always, but sometimes. So a pulley dropper or an up and over, or even like a running ledger if you can cast one far away, I think are perfect for this because they, they are on the bottom. You're going to catch them on the bottom. My last two peeler crab baits are out. One more. Oh, look at that. Circle hook. Another little starry. But I tell you what, the scrapping now it's come dark and this light's dying. Right, well, that is my last peel of crab bait. The sun is just setting at back of me there and the tide has just turned round and started flooding back. So that's perfect. Yeah. I'll fish these last two baits out and then we'll pack up. I think I've earned myself some sandwiches. <laughs> Brought some sandwiches with me and I thought, oh yeah, well, if we get a slack period, I'll have my sandwiches. I just haven't stopped. It is lovely, I've, well, I'm, I'm in the way of it. You can't really see it. That sun setting there back of us. I've said loads of times before, it's, it's not only just the fishing. The fishing is almost the excuse that you use. It takes you to these places. I just love it. If you had to explain it to somebody, they wouldn't get it even if you explained it to them. Got it. I haven't looked yet. But shall we guess what hooks caught it on? Yep. In the wash. Circle hook. Fish them with a light drag, let them run, and then lift into them, and it's the circle hook that takes them. Now I've only, the only one that hasn't been caught on the circle hook was the one that was caught on the scratching rig. One bait left. Yeah, I think that's a bite. Whoa. 
and a nice size one just to finish with. <laughs> of course it was. On the circle hook. A nice, uh, a nice feisty common. You see, no spots. Still a lovely looking fish. Hey, calm yourself. See what I mean? Look, if they had teeth, they'd have you. <laughs> if they had teeth, they'd be, da they'd be dangerous. This has been the general stamp tonight. Yeah, you can't do this with a top. Don't try and do this with a top. For me, this is the perfect way to finish. An amazing session on the smooth downs. I've had, I've had over a dozen. I don't know how many I've caught. I weighed, the, I weighed the biggest one while I had a bit of time. It was nine pound. This one, I don't think is bigger than that. So the average stamp today is between six and nine pound. I had one small one that was about three. But yeah. The killer bait was peeler crab and the killer rig was a pulley dropper rig with a pedal hook, but with the top pedal as a circle. I hope you found the video interesting. I hope you've enjoyed joining me. All the very best. We'll see you later.